The Sharks' biggest regrets. Deals they passed that later became successes. Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the Sharks' biggest regrets. Deals they passed that later became successes. Let's get right into it. Not every entrepreneur who enters the Shark Tank manages to secure a deal with the panel of eager investors. However, some have managed to succeed and grow their businesses without the financial support of the Sharks. Let's take a look at some of the most successful Shark Tank contestants who managed to thrive even after leaving the tank empty-handed. Ring Ring, once known as Doorbot, was a video doorbell that became one of Shark Tank's most successful rejections. Despite the Shark's lackluster reaction, Amazon later acquired the company for almost $1 billion. In early 2018, Ring introduced a smart home doorbell. Creator Jamie Simonoff left Shark Tank empty-handed in Season 5, despite investing $10,000 in his pitch. Nevertheless, Ring now generates approximately $577 million in annual revenue. Copa Divino during Shark Tank's second season, Vinter James Martin presented single-serve wine in a plastic container called Copa de Vino. The Sharks were not interested in his $600,000 offer for 30% ownership. It appeared that the Sharks were attracted to Martin's container, not his wine. Martin never made a deal with the show's investors despite appearing for a rare second time in the tank during season 3. He knew that he had a successful product and came across as arrogant. Copa de Vino now earns $3.5 million per year without the support of the Sharks. Kodiak Cakes In April 2014, Kodiak Cakes entered the Shark Tank seeking a $500,000 investment for a 10% ownership stake in their protein-heavy whole-grain pancake mix business. Co-founder Joel Clark projected earnings of $20 million through 2018, but left without a deal. However, today, the company generates approximately $160 million in annual revenue and has expanded its product line significantly. Hammer and Nails Michael Elliott, the founder of Hammer and Nails, pitched his idea of a men's manicure salon franchise to the Sharks just five weeks after opening his first store. The Sharks were not interested in his offer of a 20% stake for a $200,000 investment in 2014 when Elliott valued his company at $1 million. However, angel investors who saw the episode came forward with $200,000 in seed money. By mid-2017, the thriving Hammer & Nails franchise was valued at $100 million. In 2021, the company reported a 270% increase in revenue from previous years. Bedjet Mark Aramley and his Bedjet were rejected by all five sharks in 2015 for their fast-cooling fan system for under-the-bed sheets. The Sharks had told Aramley that nobody would ever want the bed jet. However, he invested in himself using his life savings, credit cards, and a mortgaged house. By the end of 2016, sales had risen by 300% from the previous year, and in 2017, they doubled that figure. Today, the company generates approximately $5 million in annual sales, with a total of over $30 million in sales to date. Zero Shoes Lena Phoenix, the owner of Zero Shoes, did not receive any new investment money from the Sharks during her 2013 appearance on Shark Tank. Nevertheless, the episode generated significant publicity for the company, leading to a flood of orders and over $1 million raised through crowdfunding. In July 2020, Zero Shoes became official partners with USA Artistic Swimming, demonstrating the value of the shoes' exposure despite the lack of investment. The Lip Bar Despite facing harsh criticism from one of the Sharks, who referred to their vegan, paraben-free and gluten-free lipsticks as colorful cockroaches, founders Melissa Butler and Roscoe Spears have found success with the lip bar. Their product gained validation when actor Taraji P. Henson wore it to the Oscars in 2018, and it is now available at Target stores nationwide. The lip bar brings in $1.6 million in annual revenue. Big Shake's Hot Chicken and Fish During his appearance on Shark Tank in Season 2, Sean Chef Big Shake Davis received positive feedback from the shrimp-based burger patty he created with his daughter, but received no investment offers. However, the exposure on the show led to an influx of inquiries and, eventually, a genuine investor. Within a year of his rejection, Davis's $30,000 company was valued at $5 million, and his products were available in stores across the United States. Rocket Book Although Jake Epstein and Joe LeMay's pitch for a smartphone-compatible notebook with cloud-sharing capabilities and microwave-erasable pages seemed too unconventional for the Sharks in their Shark Tank pitch, consumers loved it. The first Rocket Book became an Amazon bestseller after earning $1.2 million worth of Indiegogo funding. In 2020, the company's net sales reached $32 million, up 35% from the previous year. 
Mealenders. In 2017, Mark Bernstein appeared on Shark Tank to request $300,000 in exchange for an 8% stake in his company, Mealenders, which produced a lozenge that claimed to naturally suppress appetite and prevent dessert cravings. Despite having generated $1.4 million in sales on his own Amazon store within just 18 months, the Shark Tank investors were unimpressed with the taste and skeptical of the product's potential to be labeled a fad diet item. Nevertheless, after the episode aired, Mealender's sales surged to $5 million. Over the Moo Alex Hausman also appeared on the Australian version of Shark Tank with his company Over the Moo during its third season. Despite the shark's lack of interest, Hausman's business has since exceeded $1 million in net worth. The Australian investors on the show wished him well and praised his courage, but it seems that luck may not have been necessary after all. That's all for today, and we'll be sure to catch you all in the next one.